Yo, what's up guys? So actually recently one of my videos, I think it was episode 18, 19 or something like that, shot up to like 800 views in like a couple hours. So I'm actually like really stoked about that because usually for long form, I only get like 20 views. So super exciting. So if this one ends up, you know, doing pretty well, that's great because now it's like, I'm talking to like an auditorium full of people. Is that an auditorium? Like probably like a, not a, definitely not a stadium, but like maybe like a, a high school, high school half full bleachers. Maybe a high school football game, half, half full bleachers. Nah, like a full, yeah, definitely like a basket, a high school basketball game. Every bleacher, bleacher row filled up watching me talk about bullshit. Pretty much talking about the, the raw reality of being uh, an 18 year old entrepreneur. It is a lonely thing, even though I'm, I have a big team, I have people I love, it's it's overall a very lonely journey, okay? it's That's what's real and that's just what is what I feel, is I feel alone in this journey, okay? But I choose to be alone. I choose to, to be uh, the way I am because if I was just like everyone else, then I wouldn't be exceptional. To be exceptional, I have to be different. I can't fit in. And I've always, if you've been this person where you've always felt like, you know, it doesn't seem right or like, you know, that, you know, that kind of, that doesn't res resonate with me well. Or like, you know, I don't like how that's done or like, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I'm gonna follow that. Like if you're thinking about those things, well, you're probably, if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking about that. You've probably been in that scenario. So you are an exception. But to be exceptional, to be really exceptional, is to be something that's truly different. Someone that's truly different. So in order to be do, truly different, you can't do the same as everyone else. Because if you did the same as everyone else, then you would be getting the same results as them. And that's not exceptional. And if you wanna be exceptional, then don't do the same as everyone else. So it's a Saturday. I still haven't locked my sleep schedule down after 20 episodes. I still have not locked my fucking sleep schedule down. Last night I slept until like fucking 12, uh, which sucks. Not, not, I didn't sleep in, but I, 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 I got sucked in on the doom scrolling. And I suffer from this. And I wish I can say that, you know, I have that, how do I say, fuck up. That's my, that's my fuck up. It's like I end up getting sucked in at night with doom scrolling. And it's really, it's really, really, really bad habit of mine. If, and if I just fix that, then I would have so much better sleep. I'd be performing better at the workspace. It's just like that one thing is really keeping me from like my full, full, full potential. So I, I did it yes, like I think yesterday, no, two days ago, I did it really well. 9.45, I was eyes closed, 15 minutes of sleep. That was perfect. That was really, really perfect. So I was happy about that, but next day, I end up doing this shit. It's like, fuck. And I don't, you know, I'm not gonna ex expect myself to sleep at the same exact time, but I don't want my sleep times to be two hours apart, you know, so. Why is it so busy? What the fuck? Oh, he's gonna hit that guy, no way. Oh my gosh, I don't know how you didn't hit that guy. How'd you not hit him? Okay, where the fuck are some spots, yo? And then tonight, I'm gonna go to my favorite spot to chillax. Well, really not chillax, but to work. But I'm gonna be back by 8.45 or like latest nine so that I can upload all the footage and start taking my sleep supplements and then putting on my red light glasses and all that shit. Oh my gosh, there's literally no spots here. So I really have to start winding down. I have to start taking my supplements at like 8.15 for sleep so yeah i mean I'm, I'm like really serious about this stuff i gotta be super strategic about this sleep stuff so it's actually really cold it's like not really cold but it's 48 degrees today just did the cold tub it's a little early because i want to make sure that i don't stay at that that place for too long um, because if i do stay for too long then i end up messing up my sleep and then it messes up tomorrow and it's like this like vicious cycle. So I just prefer not to do all that shit. Is this person about to leave? You trying to leave? Okay, he's not trying to leave. Last time I went to this LA Fitness, I uh, I did not have a good good workout. But you know, just gotta get used to it, get in my groove, and then and then I'll be chilling. Yeah, Dave and Buster's popping today. Where the fuck is Pop? Fuck, man! I've been in this parking lot forever. Hey, this is why. 
This is why I get a private gym membership. Right now I can't go to my private gym because, or a private club, because this stupid, stupid club. We have a dispute with them right now. And it's just the biggest misunderstanding ever. So stupid. So I'm having to go to LA Fitness in the meantime while that all gets figured out. So, inshallah. Inshallah it gets figured out. Gosh, damn, this fucking guy's so close. You know, fuck that. Go, oh my, I'm so tired of this already. I'm just gonna park in this free open spot right here. I don't give a shit. Like an Asian mom. All right, it's time to fucking work out. All right, I just got done. Pretty short workout, it was only like 40 minutes or something like that, but at least we got it in for today. All that matters is you showed up and a lot of people don't even fucking show up. So showing up is better than, than nothing, than not showing up. So my, I guess my brain or my clock is still treating the weekends differently, which I hate. Like I just want, I don't really care what day of the week it is. I just know Sunday's for fuh, that's it. And, and really that's all, and it's just my damn, damn sleep schedule that I need to lock in. Lock in that, get my cortisol blockers, lower my cortisol levels and stuff like that. I did notice, or I did do some research on the stuff that was in my sleep supplements and the cortisol blockers that are from Gorilla Mine. They have a, a substance called Emodin, which is an old Chinese kind of, I guess, remedy for, I forget what, what it was treated for, but something that was used in maybe ancient ancient Chinese cultures, uh, but pretty much, yes, it will lower my stress levels and anxiety levels, but it will lower so much to where I become des desensitized to pretty much all emotions, which for a lot of people is not a great thing or for actually any anybody, it's, it's not a good thing to not have emotions or like cortisol is not all bad. Like you gotta have cortisol to actually operate as a human. That's what actually gets you up in the morning is having those cortisol levels spike. So I definitely don't wanna take this right in the morning. I wanna take this at night to, to, for me to wind down. It looks like there's a huge wreck here. It looks like huge, huge, huge wreck. But I'm gonna pair this with my sleep supplements. I mean, I, I just feel like for those nights where you know I have on, on my mind, I'm just gonna take them. But I mean, I usually always have a lot on my mind, so I always try to figure out in my head, but that's not good because you can't do anything. And actually your brain is, is pretty pretty good about this stuff. It, it, doesn't, is a, it doesn't work on what you're already good at, it works on where you're deficient at. So if you have problems that you're trying to figure out, it will actually kind of figure it out while you're dreaming, uh, which is really, really, really interesting, is that like there's, there's stories of, well, you hear it all the time, hear musicians trying to figure out this note and trying to figure out how to play this thing and then they just can't get it right. It's like one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, and they can't figure it out. They do like one, two, three, two, five, six, and it's like, oh wow, what happened here? Oh, it's a big wreck. Oh, that's a big, big, big wreck. But pretty much they're like, man, I can't figure this out. And then they go to bed and then next day, just like, it just flows in their head. It's just like one, two, three, one, four, one, two, three, one, four, one, two, three, one, four, and it's like, they didn't learn anything new, it's just they just let themselves sleep and then for some reason, sleep figures it out, which is really interesting. And I think it's, I think REM does that. I think when, when you, REM is pretty much short for rapid eye movement and it's your dreaming phase. And I've also been trying to, I haven't been actively trying to, but, but I used to keep track of my dreams and like I keep it, I literally kept a dream journal and I tried to lucid dream. There's a supplement out there called glutamine, something like that, Gl maybe glutamine, I don't, I don't know. It's some sort of, it's supposed to help your dream clarity or like it's supposed to like spark lucid dreams. So it's, it's supposed to pretty much enhance the vividness in your dreams uh, so that you're like, man, this is not, this is not like real life. This is an actual dream. And then you do like, you know, frequent, uh, you'd, you'd make it a habit to do reality checks. So in a dream, if I put my finger through my, my palm here, it would, it, would, it would go through. Or if I look at time, time wouldn't exist on, in a dream. So, you know, you'd, you'd, like what you do for people that want a lucid dream is you would pretty much make it a habit to do this. And then that habit will end up flowing into your dream. And then once your hand goes through, it's like, shit, I'm dreaming. And then you're in your lucid dream. Some people, I'm actually really jealous of this, is some people can actually lucid dream pretty much every night, which I think is 
freaking awesome because that that pretty much means like I can like you know that's like time that's like time I would have never had that I can actually consciously experience so it's like instead of 33 years of my life being taken away from me I, if I live to 100 years because you know it usually takes a third of your life it only takes up you know maybe a quarter of my life you know that's that's pretty dramatic but that's pretty huge actually but for well another accident here fucking accidents happen everywhere here but imagine you can just like get an hour back every night so like your days would be 25 hours instead of 24 you would actually have a competitive advantage that no one really can easily tap into you know i i don't know much about it but I think it's really interesting being able to lucid dream because when you lucid dream, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You can, it's pretty much like a virtual reality, but it's literally a virtual, like it's, it's not like you're putting a headset on. It's like, it's real. Well, it's not real, but it's like in your, in your head real. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's fucking sick. I think that's the sickest thing ever is being able to lucid dream. I've only lucid dreamed once and you know, I've, I've never lucid dreamed again after that. I, I lucid dreamed once and I think I was flying around and then I got too excited and I got woke up and I woke up. So being able to, to have that self-control in the dream, like I'm, I'm dreaming, okay. And then I go do my stuff. I'd, I'd, it'd be cool if I can like, you know, go work or, or do something cool every night. You know, that, that's, that's I'd like actually look forward to going to bed instead of like scrolling on shorts. So there is a strategy to it where you like purposely get into sleep paralysis. So what you do is you set an alarm for like 3 a.m. in the morning, which is like, I, I don't, for some reason, maybe it's like in the middle of a sleep cycle when you're about to enter REM. And what you do is that you let your body fall asleep, but you're still conscious pretty much. So it's weird. I've done it before. It was really hard to do. But you're, you pretty much, yeah, you, if you've ever been in sleep paralysis, you pretty much can't do anything. You can't yell, you can't do anything, but you're conscious. You can't move your body, but you start hearing shit and you just gotta know that your brain is actually producing that, those, these figures, because usually during sleep paralysis, you may see some figures, you may see some voices, but these are all, you know, generated with, within, within your head. So you do that, you get past the sleep paralysis part and then because you're still conscious, you go past that part, you, and then you just enter straight into, you just slip into the the REM, the REM, REM, REM sleep, uh, fully conscious. So you don't have to, you don't have to do any reality checks or anything. You just have, you just go straight in. Uh, it's the, I guess, the hardest thing to do because one, it's fucking scary to be in the sleep paralysis, even though you know it's like it's not real. It feels so real to where you start questioning it. <laughs> Uh, but you know, you know shit like that's not real. It's just all in your head and it's just like that's not that's not actually there It's just it's just your voice. You, it's just your mind. I don't know what the science is behind it I don't know why that exists. Maybe it's some fucking part of our maybe No way this fucking thing died on me I don't know when that died on me, but I was pretty much just talking about Learning how to lucid dream and how cool it would be to be able to lucid dream every single night It died, but I'll see you guys once I'm back. I'll charge this shit I actually found out that teeth can actually be genetic, which is really interesting because I thought it was just based on, you know, how, how much you brush your teeth and like, or how well you took care of your teeth. But some people could be more sensitive to tooth decay, which kind of makes sense now, 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 now me saying it out loud. Uh, but man, it was like, I most, no matter how many times uh, someone flosses or someone like brushes their teeth and do all, does all this stuff like someone could still get cavities just depending on their genetics So I didn't know that had a role with genetics or I guess I didn't know tooth decay uh, Was in that realm with genetics, which is really interesting. So I have relatively straight teeth I just got I got Invisalign like a couple months ago. Uh, I got pretty straight teeth I used to have like really crooked bottom teeth, but I'm starting to floss a lot more and take care of my teeth. The worst thing, the worst insult to someone is, is saying that they smell bad. Especially if you say your fucking breath stinks. Because it's like you can't even talk. You don't want to talk to a person and say like, you know, what you're doing. Because your fucking breath smells, dude. They don't want to talk to you. It's like, it's like you look ugly. It's like, ah, it's whatever. You know, I probably know that. But if it's like your breath stinks. It's like, fuck. But fucking brush your teeth, you filthy animals. So right now we're headed to... 
my go-to spot for my getaway on Saturday, my mini vacation. I guess you call it, this is what I look forward to on Saturdays. You, I should probably do these on Fridays, but I ended up getting way too busy yesterday. And if I went, I would have got home really late. So I'm going now at like in the evening. So I get back home at like nine or hopefully earlier because that's a little bit a little bit late too. I feel like a grandpa because uh, I usually, before I'd, I'd have no problem coming home at like one or two. Like I'm not, I wasn't born like this. I was, this is just, uh, I have to be in this season of kind of monk mode. And like, even if I'm not in this season, I actually really enjoy being able to do this and being able to feel good every day is getting my sleep right, getting my diet right. I. I I really overlooked diet a lot. I thought I was fucking immune to this shit, but diet had a huge role on a lot of things. So I, I had a ton of carbs all day. So I'd, I had easily, easily 300 grams of carbs every single day. And that really fucked up my hemoglobin levels because all the starch and stuff. And I found out that, you know, definitely have your fruits, you can have honey. Even though I have carbs in them, I think the, th this is just something I'm very new to, but Paul Saladino, I've been watching a lot of Paul Saladino content and uh, he talks about red meat and he's not only, he's not like, he's not so biased like Liver King and some of these guys, but he's like, you know, there's a lot of research backing red meat um, and he's not just only red meat, it's like chicken, it's really hard to find really good chicken and it's really hard to find really good pork and most of the time you should probably just avoid pork, uh, it's probably why the, the, the Middle Eastern people avoid I think that's right, Middle Eastern people. Sorry if I get it wrong. But their their reasoning was like, you know, pigs are, are dirty. And, uh, and I think pork is like one of the lower quality meats that you can get. The highest quality meats are probably definitely beef, bison, uh, elk, uh, and then lamb, I think are the, the ones where you can, you know, most of the time you're getting good stuff. But if you're going to Walmart and Kroger and getting some fucking great value shit, you know, that's, that's not good. But I mean, any beef is going to be good. Uh, but you definitely want to get, gr I, what I do is I go get grass fed and grass finished beef. Oh shit, I should be probably going that way. Hold on. Uh, but pretty much grass, grass fed, grass finished and regenerative uh, farming. Uh, re regenerative cows, I think is what you call them. So I, I get them from this company called White Oak Pastures or sometimes at HGB, you know, they'll have grass fed. I don't know if it's grass finished as well, but White oak pastures, organic, grass-fed, grass-finished beef. Yes, it is pricey, but I mean, it's it's just the the that's just how it is for if you want to get higher quality meats like that. So, because with with a lot of beef, there's if it's not grass-finished or grass-fed, uh, I think there's it comes just with a lot of heavy metals and stuff, and it's just overall not good for you. Uh, so I think my diet is well my diet is really consisting of like a new york strip at lunch um, it's a nice lean cut i i usually cut off the fat on the on the end of it you know so i'm not really too concerned about that i'm trying i'm i, I do have i also need to order some more liver you only need like half ounce every day up uh, an ounce at most so you can just cut it up into pill size form and then just pop like freeze them pop them in and then that's good so it's really easy, you just like, I honestly, I prefer eating liver raw than eating eating eggs raw. I think eggs eggs raw are just, just kind of gross me out. A liver I have no problem with, like liver I can just, just give me a cup of water and I can take down liver no problem. But with, with, with eggs, it's a little harder for me, some people disagree, but with eggs, man, raw eggs, just, just you know, I have a friend that he like literally takes the whole egg, he puts it in his mouth and he like eats the fucking eggshells. That's fucking intense. Apparently there's a bunch of calcium benefits with that, but that's just fucking gross. I, I, I mean, I know there's benefits to it, but it's just, it's, just, it's just gross. Just have like, you definitely want to have more egg whites than egg yolks, because uh, egg yolks are, I think, high in no good cholesterol stuff. I think, though, know, it's actually good cholesterol, but you definitely, because I think it's it's just high in saturated fat, so you just want to keep control on your, your yolk intake. But other than that, I take, I ha I'll have eggs as my replacement for usually my rice, because I'll usually have at least two cups of rice at lunch, or I'll have some pasta, but I've cut that out a long time ago. 
if you're having pasta during lunch, discontinue ASAP. Cause I don't know how you guys operate, but if you know, if you can, you can, but all those carbs, you're slamming down lunch, you're gonna be so exhausted. You have a whole carb crash because all the sugars I, from from all the pasta and, and the rice. So, uh, and then you want to be able to perform at your peak capacity. So, what I do, here's my nootropic stack. I've I've repeated this many times on the channel, but it's it's a a blend. It's a so I wait about an hour to 90 minutes, you know, after I wake up before I take this stuff because it hits pretty much immediately, and there's some sort of androgen re receptors. No, some, some other receptor. Sorry, I'm not like extra on this stuff. But I just know kind of the, the picture, the, the full picture, the, the big picture of it is you want to be 90 minutes uh, after you wake up for caffeine or really any stimulants in general, uh, you want to wait 90 minutes after you wake up. So if you wake up at 6.30, you can take your stems at nine. So that's kind of where, I, where I'm at right now. So, or no, at eight, yeah, at eight. So you can take I take a Gorilla Mine Advanced Nootropic Formula. It has caffeine in it, about 200, 200 milligrams, and then L-theanine. It, it's there's L-theanine with which lowers stress. So it's like the there's caffeine in there, which heightens your focus and like it stims you up. But then the L-theanine kind of balances out, so it kind of puts you in this like flow flow mode, flow state, or whatever you want to call it. I actually bought a program for like I bought a coaching program. It's from the Flow Research Group. And what they do is they study everything about flow. And I can never pronounce the name of the guy who kind of found out about flow. It was Milahai Mikchensihai, something like that. Milai Mikchensihai. Some, uh, I think is a Scandinavian uh, person. Maybe not, I'm probably very wrong. You know, you guys probably shouldn't listen to me at all. But Flow Research Group, they research this kind of, this state of mind. Athletes know this, gamers know this. You definitely know this is that like when you're doing an activity, time feels so fast. You don't even think about time. You're just like, I'm just, I just exist in this task and like everything flows effortlessly. Like it's like, it's pretty much when everything is effortless, but it's like you enjoy that. It's not like it's, so with flow, it's, you, it can't be too easy because if it's too easy, then you can't, you can't get in a flow because you can't activate those cortisol levels. And if it's too hard, you end up not getting any dopamine levels, which doesn't, I guess, make your brain continue to go on, I think. So the right balance, what they measured was 4% harder or 4% more than your current skill set. So it's not at, but 4% more than your current skill set, which obviously is very objective. Holy shit, what the fuck? This guy just like braked so hard in front of me. It's ridiculous. I like six months of owning this car and I'm already in like, already almost been in like fucking t 20 accidents. I just got to drive slower. I drive, I end up just driving too fast, but, and I just got to focus on the road. But hopefully I don't crash. And if I do, whatever. What was I saying? I was saying, I was talking about flow. Yeah. So f with flow, you really want to, what was I going to say about flow? Yeah. F so for flow, it's a, it's a state of mind where everything feels effortless. Uh, you've experienced it before, for sure. Like maybe where you're playing a sport, you're playing soccer or playing basketball, and you felt like, you know, you can make every shot. You felt like, you know, you can be in there forever. You felt like, you know, shit, it's been this long. It's like when you have that moment, it's like, okay, you experience flow. And pretty much with the Flow Research Collective, what they did was they were trying to research how do, how do we activate this on command? And really the, the conclusion of all this, after I've been through the whole coaching program and been on their calls, is that flow cannot be really on command. It can only be, pri you can only be primed for flow. So pretty much it's, it's it, the, the program teaches you how to be more su success, susceptible, susceptible, or more, more, uh, how do I say that word? So I'm trying to get this word out of my head, but it's like more, uh, I guess, you have, it gives you more opportunities to get in flow. So they pretty much set you up in these kind of conditions so that your brain and body and everything can work in tandem to be in flow. So a lot of, a lot of what flow is just environment. So if, if you're not in the right environment, you, you will not be able to get in flow. Uh, so they pretty much, they don't, you, you can't just like, I can't just go like this and get in a flow. I have to be in the right environment to do it. I have to, you know, it depends on my, my, my brain chemical stuff, but like 
they pretty much teach you the, the whole thing about it was like flow isn't focused con concentration was was one one of my miss biggest misconceptions was like i thought you could just like you know get in get in flow on command but what they what they're pretty much teaching is that like you know there's some people that can do that but you know you can have access to it every day but you can't just like go like like you can't just like be like i want to be in flow it won't work it has to be effortless it has to be like seamless it has to just flow which is what it is you can't disrupt the flow you can't be like i want to focus well that's not how it works you just the big thing was limiting limiting all distractions prime your body for it. one was the biggest one was sleep sleep was a really 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 big thing was sleep making sure you're recovering right so doing like sauna doing active recovery at the end of the day so you're like relaxing your body and all this stuff and making sure that you're you're really rejuvenating after a really intense work day because what a lot of people do is that they will spend oh my gosh like what is wrong with this road they will spend more they will spend eight hours trying to boil water at half heat than you could have just or, or like you, you you spent more time boiling water at half heat than you would have just just put on full blast for less time so that's pretty much what flow is is that your productivity is is like i think it's like a 300 percent increase in normal productivity levels and so you can get more done in less time but the thing is the thing about flow is that you just end up i guess your your brain i guess the neural pathways are able to solve problems better it's, or like your memory picks up better and, and this stuff so i mean i don't i don't know the all the science behind it but at the end of the day whether you get in flow or not it, it really matters on what you're doing in those hours that you're working. If you're doing tasks that, you know, you can get someone that is is worth five bucks an hour, I'm not saying they're literally worth five bucks an hour, but you can get someone on the marketplace that'll do this for much less than what you're actually worth, then you shouldn't be doing it. Like if the task you're doing is a $10 an hour task, then, and you're, and you know, you probably made, you know, 50K, not 50K, like maybe like, 100k this year you should absolutely not be doing that task so you need to make sure that you know even if i do get in flow but i'm doing 10 dollars an hour tasks it doesn't really move the needle on my business whether i get in flow or not so it's really important that you before you even think about this stuff is that you draw the line with like hey what what am i actually worth okay dan martell talks about this is like his buyback it's called the buyback principle and what you do is you do your total income for the day you brought in from the company, okay? Your total amount of income, okay? And then you do divide it by 2080. So then you get your hourly rate. So anything lower than your hourly, or you do, you get your hourly rate and then you do divide it by four. And then that's the amount of money you have to be able to delegate to, that you should be delegating to someone else is, is a quarter of your buyback time. At your, your hourly rate so that would be your buyback rate so let's say my buyback rate was like 40 bucks that means i can get four maybe six people you know from from offshore to to help with tasks around so or just get one person that's worth 40 bucks an hour to do something that i would have done uh, but they maybe are better at it or they love it more or like all this stuff so like because I, I hate data and she work so that's why we hired someone for it. It's like someone who, who actually loves the admin tasks and does all this stuff. I think that is one of the, the best hires is, is, uh, is getting someone that can do admin. Or my best hire was actually someone who, an executive assistant. It's really important because they should be the gatekeeper to your time. They should be able to really, really protect your time and, and not have to drag you. A, a really great executive assistant is someone who doesn't drag you in to you know stuff that's really not worth the time they know what your time is worth and they do everything in their absolute power to be able to pretty much be there be you without you being there so they have to be able to make decisions on your behalf and, and negotiate on your behalf. and obviously that comes with time with your with your ea but that's where you really get back a lot of your time is when you're able to have someone make decisions that you would have made on your behalf and being able to to hire someone from that for that is i think you know one of the best if not the best hire hires once you've kind of gone past i think once you've gone past you know even 100k uh, i think even 100k i think at that point you should have at least a personal assistant 
Uh, I think it's absolutely worth the money. I think it's worth worth every penny is an executive assistant. Can I park here? No, I can't park here. So the first, really the first hire for something like this, an assistant in general, would be like an administrative assistant. So someone who organizes the spreadsheets, does all the mission, like the, the tedious work, like the really tedious data entry work that's crucial, but it's just like, it's not, it's not high income producing activity, but it is needed to operate a business. So like someone like that is worth, you know, you can find someone offshore for like five bucks, 10 bucks an hour, no problem. And then once you get a personal assistant, that's like 20 bucks. EA, you can go around, you know, someone 30 bucks to 40 bucks a month or not a month, an hour. And then, and then you go to chief of staff, which I'm not there yet, but chief of staff, I'm assuming would probably be like 80 bucks an hour, uh, somewhere in that range where they actually are operating, you know, your companies pretty much. They're like, she's, or, or like he or she, and I, I, I prefer a woman doing this because for some reason, women just do it a lot better with this type of role. So yeah, I will be back. All right, I'm headed back now. I, uh, I met this kid, he's 16. He's a junior at a school close here. And I just had to talk with him. And the kid is genius. I, mean, I, I thought I was hot shit. Oh, fuck. Now we, got, now, we, now we really got a prime example of someone who, who will genuinely surpass me tenfold. Good. Now I got even more drive. Now I know that this kid out there, 16, he's fucking getting after it, you know? So it's time for me to fucking go. That's how I kind of motivate myself. There's not a lot, there's not a lot of self-motivation going on. David Goggins talks about it, you know, about self-motivation. You know, you gotta learn how to self-motivate. I don't do it enough. I just been doing this shit for so long. It's like, I don't need to motivate. It's just like, this shit this is what I do. That's all I do. It's just work. I think it's time to really lock in. It's 8, 8.30, kind of going home, going to bed, straight to bed. Well, I, I gotta upload this video, these video files first, but I'll go straight home, or actually straight back to office, and then upload the footage, and start heading to bed. Prepare for tomorrow, having a podcast with the kid. His name's Andreas, very smart dude. He's had so much, such a level of success in the past seven months, insane. Started from nothing, insane. But with fast success, it's not always a good thing because with fast success, it creates ego, huge ego. And I know this. We've had huge success with Astro Blaster, but I got caught up and uh, we weren't able to, you know, fulfill on every client. So providing that level of service at mass is definitely something that has been a real challenge for us. But we are, we're very close to cracking the code. We're very close. And I've said this many times with the team, but this time I really feel like we're very close to cracking the code. And again, this is the story I'm gonna be telling. This is the story I'm gonna be telling. I got I haven't been investing as much as my my time in self-education as I liked. I definitely need to be investing more in self-education to learn more, to learn the skills required to go to the next level. That's something I I've, I've been really overlooking. It's like I think I've learned everything. No, you haven't, Andy. You have not learned shit. You've made some money, but you know very little about, you know, a lot of, of this space. So sometimes, you know, I gotta humble myself. I'd be like, you know, I, I actually, I don't know shit. I, not, I may know something, but I am nowhere near close to, to my potential, you know? So I have to pour ridiculous amounts of money to learn and learn and learn and learn. And uh, I thought I learned quick, quickly, but man, this guy, this guy was on the ball. Very on the ball. I gotta take more courses. I think I'm gonna join SAS Academy. That's I think that's where I'm gonna go. Do SAS Academy. I mean, I'm gonna get on my my SAS. Once I get to a red light, I'm gonna unlock that. I'm gonna try to book a call with them. But I definitely want to join SAS Academy because they are a really. They're pretty much a company. Oops. They're pretty much a academy for people like me. So I need to invest time and energy and money there. Uh, so that I can learn the skills required to stop client sharing. Because I think I know shit about it, but I don't. I really don't. Or at least I do, but I need reform reinforcement on my decisions. So actually, I'm glad we're doing this, talking a lot of videos, because now it's kind of really dissecting me as a person and what you know I should be doing. Uh, I kind of I was in the shower today after my cold plunge, 
And I mean, I'm listening to like a, a video from Alex Shimozzi and it's one of his really, the, the best videos that resonated with me the most was, it was like the 28 ways to stay poor. And uh, I started thinking like, what, what are like all the ways I can, you know, destroy my company? Well, I'd be very distracted with low leverage activities. I wouldn't, you know, give one-on-one -on -one support to every client. That's how you lose them. Because like I started listening to all these things and it's like, I found out that humans were so good at, as humans, we're so good at, you know, finding problems rather than actually having solutions. So this is what Charlie Munger does is that he, he, he developed this thing called inverse thinking. It's not rocket science, it's like just finding all the problems to something. Like, it's like, how do I just, like, how do I, how do I, instead of saying like, how do I have a good marriage, say, what are the, what are all the ways I can destroy my marriage? Or like, what are all the ways I can destroy my business? And like, you, you can start easily listing out all these problems because uh, for some reason, us humans are much better at doing that instead of actually providing solutions. So what you do is you list all the problems and then you just do the opposite of what you just listed. So if it's like, don't provide one-on-one -on -one support, opposite of that is provide one-on-one -on -one support. So like that, that version of thinking is is something I applied to not recently, but something that I've kind of traced back to now was like, you know, to solve problems, you kind of have to think of all the problems and then or to solve something, you have to think of the problems or the ways you'd kind of make it go wrong and then and then and then do everything you can to make to, to like to like just switch, flip the problem or flip the, the inverse of it. And then now you have the solution for that problem so it's called inverse thinking it's by charlie munger and uh, that's a really great way, way of thinking is is thinking listing out all the problems possible problems all the possible threats to a, to something and then just doing the opposite of them and that's how you solve it is you just you just flip them you just do the opposite of the problem which is usually the solution so sas academy yeah i'm red, red light now yeah i'm gonna download sas academy and see if i can connect, connect with other uh, players in the space that are also doing this or like doing this like SaaS model where uh, we're, we're, we're kind of text message driven. Um, I know a lot of places where we can definitely improve, but we're starting to scale up the marketing side, which is great. Uh, but we need, I, I'm pretty much in charge of customer fulfillment and all that. So customer fulfillment is definitely a, another story. So if, again, I've said this before, but if the value is lower then the price they paid for, then they will churn. They will cancel, they will leave if we're still refund and dispute. So we need to make sure there's as large of a gap between price and value as possible. So the value has to be so much more higher than the price that they're paying for. Any frustrations will will exponentially actually decrease that gap. So I, again, have to invest. The only, the thing I feel like I'm missing is I'm not investing enough in self-education. I felt like, you know, I've learned everything. I felt like I, you know, I'm on top of the world. And that's what kind of fast growth does to you is that like you feel like you don't need to to learn anymore. You feel like you've kind of made it, which is completely false and I've 100% not made it and I need to learn more. I need to learn the skill sets required to get to the level where I want to go and learn from the people, pay the people's time that have already been there, have done it, and pay them for their time. And uh, because that payment is nowhere close to, to how expensive uh, mistakes can be. So it's really important that I get on that. So I'm gonna join SAS Academy. Now this, this thing reminds me to, is book a call with them, uh, pay whatever they, they wanna you know, need. So just to learn everything about it, about what they do at SAS Academy, what we'll learn. I, I think the biggest thing, we don't really need to worry about marketing. Marketing is handled, but uh, what I'm really more can, kind of interested in is how to stop customer churn and how to really equip our customer success people to really, really excel and to really make sure that the experience for our people is amazing. So that's something I'm gonna join ASAP, and then maybe hopefully I connect with Dan Martell, which would, which would be pretty insane, because Dan Martell is also someone I, I really listen to, because he's, he's a very smart dude. He's actually a couple of software companies, which is very rare in, in, in 
business in general is is people actually edit, exiting software companies. It's so rare to see them actually exit and actually have a successful exit. Uh, it's a lot more common to see you know service-based businesses exit, uh, but it's a lot rare, rarer, rarer to see SaaS SaaS companies exit because it's just so hard to be categorized as a SaaS. Like in order to be actually sold as a SaaS. Your, your annual turn has to be below 10%. That means if you start out with 100 customers and a year later you're at 85, you will not be considered a SaaS company. You'll be considered a service-based company. So that's really something that uh, is really huge because our churn is much more than 10%. Uh, we, we have, I think, an average, average churn or average time a client stays or user stays with us is like six months, which is like really, really, I mean, it's not bad, it's also not great. It's, it's, cause like that means the, cause like usually if a, if someone fully adopts our platform, it's, it's very difficult for them to move off it. So it's like after, you know, after it shouldn't be measured in that way, it should be like, you know, after they stay for three months, they're locked in pretty much forever. So like, how can we make sure that first three months is the most unforgettable experience ever and making sure that they, cause after three months they're chilling cause they're gonna have plenty of user adoption. They're gonna be like, hey, you know, even if I did find a better solution, it would be impossible for me to move out because I've done so much with this platform. So really making sure, especially that first 30 days is something super special for them. So. That's something that we're, we're trying to focus on. And right now the biggest hurdle and what's causing the biggest frustration is gonna be A2P, which is application to person. And right now we're lubricating the process by automatically generating them A2P compliant websites. And let's see, let me send this link to my EA. Don't do what I'm doing right now. I'm just gonna send that to my EA, get that done. A little late, but that's that. So automated user uh, website generation. So any new user that, new user that signs up, always get like a tongue twister on that, but any new user that signs up, we automatically create a website, like a website and it's automatically ATP compliant for them so that they don't have to create or set to connect domains, they don't have to do any of that. They don't have to buy a domain, they can buy it later. Just to, just to get ATP approved first, we we pretty much will we'll take we'll take the hit. We'll not take the hit, but like we'll, we'll submit with our own creative website for them. So. That's something to work on. It should be done next day or two for beta or testing. So update you guys tomorrow in the next two days about that. Super excited. It's probably one of the better ideas that we had recently. So bye guys.